G'day and welcome to your Blender 2.8 How to Get Started Guide. Uh, so for existing Blender 2.79 users who are now making the jump to 2.8, this is for you. So I'm just gonna be pointing out like, where's that button gone? Which hotkeys have changed? And basically just helping you take those first steps because the interface has changed and a lot of things have been moved around and it can be a little jarring. And um, in my overview video, which I explain why this new release is the best thing since the Dyson, uh, it, a lot of you requested this. So I'm just making this video for you. And also at the end of the video, stick around, I'll show you where you can get a, uh, a cheat sheet with all the new shortcuts and things on it, which you can download and stick on your wall if you wanted to. Anyway, so let's start from the top. Uh, as I mentioned, and as you probably already know, selecting is now left click and right click will bring up a contextual uh, menu, which will actually change depending on what you have clicked on. So a lamp will give you this, a camera will give you this, an object will give you this. And if you're in edit mode, you get a whole bunch of different options. Um, and this replaces, by the way, the specials. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. The specials menu, which was W in 2.79, which was basically a right click menu anyway, let's be honest. So it's uh, it's it's that. Uh, now selecting everything is still A, but deselecting, you'll notice if you hit A again, nothing happens. So it's Alt A to deselect and A to select everything. At first I hated this, I'll be honest, but once I started using it, I was like, oh, this is better. And the reason is, is when you were in 2.79, remember, like if you wanted to deselect everything, you ended up tapping it like a bunch just to make sure, just to make absolutely sure you're in a deselected state. You know, like kind of like on a calculator, like you don't just hit CE once, you hit it like five times just to make sure it's clear. Well, this fixes that because now I know when I hit Alt A, I know for sure everything is deselected and it's actually great. Um, you can, by the way, double tap A, um, and it will deselect, but I mean, once you get used to it, A to select and Alt A, it's the way to go. You can also drag select, like if you just hold and like drag over an area, you can select. And if you just click into an empty area, it'll deselect everything, which is conventional to most software, right? Like even in like Windows Explorer, right? It's drag over a bunch of things and click off and it's great, I love that. And by the way, if you ever find like your cursor has switched to this circle, um, it's because your, your brain is still thinking about 2.79 and you were trying to bring up that specials menu and you hit W. So W will actually cycle through this tool, top left there, um, of the selection mode. So it'll basically, you're looking at the circle selection mode. So what you wanna do is just bring it back to uh, select box um, and that, that's actually the, the default one, which enables you to like drag over things. Another important thing that has changed is uh, search. So search used to be space, but now space will change, uh, will, will play and pause the animation, which is conventional. I, I, I think it actually makes a lot more sense and I'm sure animators will love it. But if you're looking for search, it is by default F3, which it's a little out of the way. I'll admit it's nowhere near as, as, as handy as a space bar, but then again, you don't need it that often either. So I, I prefer space for play and pause because you use that more often. Um, but anyway, F3 is search. And by the way, I would point out that you can change all of these if you wanted to. You could change your place bar, space bar action to be uh, search. You could make selecting with right if you wanted to. Um, you could have it, you can have it your way, right? You can have Burger King in your blender. Um, and also, if you really wanted to, you could just make everything the old blender. But I would actually strongly advise you not to do that. Just try it, right? Because you're gonna be kicking the can down the road, right? Because years and years into the future, like things aren't gonna be supported for the old like key map, probably. Add-ons aren't gonna work as well. And like, you're probably gonna have to switch to 2.8 key map at some point. Might as well do it now. And personally, honestly, it's easier when you're working with other software because you, you didn't probably didn't realize, but like your brain had to switch. Like I'm going to Blender, selecting with right. Uh, if I want to right click on something, I'm hitting W, right? But now it's just like, it doesn't need to do that anymore. In my opinion, it's a lot better. 
Speaking of something else that's a little bit more conventional, um, just in this timeline down here, you'll notice that if you like click and drag in this gray area, like it used to be you could just drag anywhere within here and you could move the needle. Um, now you need to make sure your cursor is in this top bar and that is how you actually drag the needle, which is conventional to video editors, right? And the reason they did this is that if you have keyframes in here, um, well, like how were you able to like click and drag on a keyframe if you're like anything within here would move the needle. So um, now you can click on something like move that across and now you can like move the timeline, etc. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's basically fixing the timeline um, problems that were there before previously. Uh, and also finally, I point out, you know, all these, these shortcuts and everything, like they will be displayed like this bottom on the bottom of your screen there. If you ever get lost, like what can I actually push in this state? Um, yeah, th th those options down there will change depending on um, what you're looking at. You'll see when I'm in the timeline, it'll give you different options down there. One thing I'm not terribly fond of, to be perfectly honest, is the new splitting and joining window action, right? Like it used to be in Blender 2.79 that you go to the top right hand corner of your screen and you drag across. You can still do that, by the way. You'll notice your cursor changes when you get to the top of a window. Um, you can do that, but the icon is gone. And I believe it's because they want you to now use, move your cursor to anywhere in a, in a thing, right click and then say split area. Um, and then you can like move that anywhere, right? So yeah, you could do that, but for some reason, I'm, sh I'm guessing it's a bug, but like join area doesn't do anything. So how would you fix that? I mean, you've got to do it the old way anyway. And I just like it having it the old way. Um, this way feels like you got to like position the cursor just right there and then right click and then split. I don't like it. Um, I, I actually think that they bring that little icon back there so that we know that that's how you split and join or, or do something else. I don't know. Well, the good news is, is you don't need to rearrange your windows as much anymore anyway, because there's these new little tabs along the top there, modeling, sculpting, etc. And as I mentioned in my overview video, the cool thing is, is not only it changes the layout to match the task, but it also enters you into that state. So you'll see in modeling, I'm now in edit mode. When I click sculpting, I'm now in sculpt mode. So I can jump straight into it um, without having to enter it and then go into that mode. It's like, it's ready to go and um, it just works a lot nicer. If you wanna move your 3D cursor, um, of course that was previously left click. Um, now it's shift right click um, and that's the, the I guess, easiest way. Uh, you can also just change to that tool. It's now a specific tool in, uh, in the toolbar there. So you can, and you can also like hold it down and like eliminate. Um, I don't know, uh, you could, you can hold it down. But anyway, that's, that's how you change that. Um, and let's just make this a little more interesting. Let's add in a little monkey, little monkey boy. And uh, let's talk about something else. So uh, if I wanted to make this smooth shading, the old way, of course, was in the toolbar, you click on smooth shading, it's gone. Where's that button? Well, it's now in the right click menu, shade smooth or shade flat. And uh, again, one of those things where I was like, ah, oh, what? No, I prefer the old way because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> but once you start using it, you're like, yeah, actually probably kind of makes sense to be in a right click menu. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the other one, and thank goodness, it's no longer reliant on that control shift alt C to change the origin and to like get your elbow in there. Uh, it's now just in a right click menu. If you want to change the origin of an object, that's where you do it. So if I, for example, I want to make my, uh, I want to position the origin on a little chinny chin chin, um, shift S, same hotkey for um, moving the, the cursor around, um, but it's now a pie menu and I just move it there and then I'll go right click, set it to 3D cursor. Probably not the easiest, I mean, it's a little convoluted, but anyways, at least I don't have to do that crazy little spider thing to hit that, that key map, because it's like such a common action. But anyway, there's no hotkey for that, by the way. Um, I actually asked William about it and he said that there just, there hasn't been any good ideas yet for like what the hotkey should be. So anyway, it might, might change at some point. Now let's talk about some uh, like mesh problems. Like let's say for example, just for the sake of this, let me just select a bunch of stuff I'm gonna do. Oh, what's happened to the ear? Um, is something wrong with my mesh? Well, previously, the way you found out which way the normals were facing was uh, you hit N for the properties here and you would go to like view and you would see something to display the normals of the object, right? In, in edit mode. Um, it's gone. 
It is now all the way up here in the overlays section. There it is down there. Okay, so this now has everything to do with like an overlay, meaning like an outline or, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you just like click that, that was one of my favorite features I mentioned is like, you can just disable everything. And so you can see basically what the renderer will see um, and just like get rid of everything. Um, anyways, so you could do that. However, having said all this, the best, this is a new feature that I, I didn't mention in the overview, but I love it. It's amazing. Um, and that is uh, face orientation. Um, and that displays it far better when you've got a normal that's facing the wrong way. Blue means it's correct, it's facing you, the camera. Um, red means something's gone wrong, you're looking at the other, the wrong side of it. And you'll notice this works across all objects, your, your whole scene, it's not just one object. Previously you had to like click on each one to find if which one had problems with it. Now it's like just turn that on and you'll be able to see any problems in your whole scene. It's it's really good. Anyway, so I'm going to select that and I will go Shift N, which is actually the new hotkey for recalculating normals. Previously it was Control N, which for other software means new file. So it was a little daunting to use that in Blender. So it's Shift N, which I think is a much, much better choice. Um, anyway, so you've got all the options here. You can disable outlines, you can um, turn off your origin, you can turn off your 3D cursor, um, change the floor, the grid, all that kind of stuff. And while we're up here as well, um, this is like a you know, handy little gizmo, which is good if you're on a laptop with a trackpad or like a tablet with a single touch point device. This gizmo is great. Um, but if you don't need it, you're on a computer, you can just disable it by clicking that. Um, now for, um, let's look at like viewport options. Okay, so this is when we are in um, standard like shaded mode, solid, solid mode. These are all the crazy options you get. You could change this to look however you want. Um, you then got like, you've got more options than you'll probably ever want. Like you can make, this is just for the viewport, right? Not the renderer. Um, this is just for like, so that you can visualize your scene and see things the way you want to see them and make some sexy screenshots, right? Change the background. Um, you got x-ray mode, which is fantastic. I love this, like that's a little uh, shortcut there so you can access it more easily. Um, I love this as like an alternative to the, uh, to the wireframe, right? Um, whoops, and uh, yeah, then you've also got cavity which replaces like ambient occlusion um, as well down there. Uh, yeah, it's it's honestly great. Depth of field for your camera when you've got that, etc. Um, so that is that. And then also, uh, let's talk about like the different modes. So these options here will change like wireframe mode, solid view mode, look dev mode, or rendered view mode. And the hotkey for this, by the way, is Z. So this now replaces like used to be like Z would bring you just to the wireframe and then solid view. And then if you wanted rendered view, it was Alt Z, no, Shift Z. Now it's just Z and you get this pie menu. And it's great, it's much faster. Like it's like one thing you have to think about, which space am I entering into? Um, again, one of those things you sort of have to like relearn in your head, but it's, it's easy once you get it. By the way, if you're in wireframe mode, because I've had some people request this and say like, I don't understand why I can't see the other side of my mesh in wireframe mode. Um, it's because uh, X-ray is turned off. So by default, it should be turned on, but if you've accidentally clicked that, then you won't be able to see through your mesh. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's like a weird like uh, occluded wireframe, which is actually handy when you only want to select like these vertices or something, right? You don't want to have to like, like wrestle with the ones on the other side of it. Anyway, that's wireframe. Then we got solid view. Oh, and yeah, X-ray is, oh yeah, I think I already mentioned that in solid view. Look dev is a new mode. So look dev is, uh, it's gonna be using your material. So whatever material properties you've got set up, like let's say this was a, something a little more interesting, right? Um, we've got something like this. So you'll see that it's using the materials, which it's gonna be rendering with, but it's not using your lights. So your lighting won't affect this mode by default, um, it's instead gonna be lit by these HDRs, which you can quickly switch to right here, which is what Blender comes built with. So you can like quickly preview things. So this is designed to preview materials and the look of things before you do a render. Cause otherwise like, you know, if you were like working on a model and doing the texturing and things, if you wanted to see that, you had to like add in some like temporary lamps just to see things. 
look dev mode replaces that. Um, but also, if you switch to scene world and scene lights, then now, both if you check both of those things, it will now be identical to rendered view mode. Um, because it's now basically, the look dev mode is powered by the EV engine. So if I'm using both the scene lights and the scene world, well, now I'm just looking at like what is gonna be rendered. Um, which actually kind of cool you can use this for is like, if my rendering engine is set to cycles, um, then let's say like I wanted to see how something was in EV, instead of like going to the render engine and then selecting EV there, if I just make my look dev mode with those two things checked, then I can like quickly preview like this is cycles and then this, oh, and then this is EV, right? So it's like a very quick way to like jump between the two like that. That's, I mean, that's what I use it for. And the final thing to talk about is layers. So you will notice the layers, there's no layers at the bottom there, they're not at the top. Where are they gone? Layers have gone. <laughs> they have been replaced by something far better, which is collections. Right up here in the top right corner, we've got collections. And it's far superior in so many ways. Um, we're no longer constrained to the arbitrary number of 20 as the maximum number of layers. But best of all, you can rename them. Um, so let's say I wanna make my two objects here. I wanna give them its own uh, collection. By default, it's put them all in one collection called collection. So I can create a new collection by clicking that little um, button in the top right corner there, or I can hit C in this section here and I'll get a new collection. Or what I like to do, let's just delete those, um, is I like to just select the objects that I wanna move them to in a new collection and I just hit M which is the same hotkey as before for like moving to a new layer. And then I just say new collection, and then I'll call this meshes, like that. Um, and then I've got this little checkbox here. If I wanna just disable that collection very quickly, it's like when you had layers and you could quickly like disable things so that they weren't visible. Um, and that'll make sure it won't render and it won't be in your viewport until you bring it back. Um, you've also got this little eyedropper here. So if you wanna hide that from your viewport, you can click that eye there. Um, and some people have asked like, what about the other stuff? What about hiding from a render? Well, they are, the options are there, but they are hidden by default. So you've got this little filter thing here. So you can change what toggles you actually get in this outline here. So I could turn on uh, that one, uh, my render and this one. Let's just talk about those because these are the most common ones. So um, this one we already talked about, we'll disable it. But this by the way is the same as like H and Alt H. So if I just like click that and then I hit H and then Alt H, it's just gonna bring everything uh, everything back at once. And that's actually a good point to, to uh, explain. This will disable in viewport, which sounds the same as the I, but disable in viewport, what that is for is when you have like, let's say this was a Boolean object, right? And you were done with it and you don't wanna see it ever again. Well then if you just hit it using H, and then let's say you were also hiding, like, I don't know, you're working on something and you, you just don't wanna see your lamp right now or your camera, and then you did it. And then when you were finished, you're like, all right, bring back the lamp and camera. You hit Alt H, it brings back the cube. And you're like, no, I don't want the cube. Hide that again, right? Um, well now, if you just don't want something to appear in the viewport, just click that, disabled. And now if you hide some stuff and then you bring that stuff back, um, your cube won't come back because it's disabled in the viewport. This one, pretty simple, disable from uh, the, the render. So it just, it'll be in your viewport, uh, but it will not render. And this one is just disabling it so it's not selectable, um, which is like, you know, locking a layer in Photoshop or whatever, so you can't select it. Anyway, coming back to the idea of um, uh, the cool stuff about collections is, uh, yeah, you can put a collection inside another collection. Um, we can make another collection here. We'll call this camera and lights. I mean, I mean, really like the, the coolest thing about this is like you can name them, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but it's proper naming. It's there finally. Um, and you can put the same object in more than one uh more than one collection. Like if I wanted my cube to be in the cameras and lights, if I just move it like this, it's just gonna be um, uh, like just dropped inside there. However, if I move it across there, you'll see you got these little things. I'm just reading it as well. <laughs> control to link. If you hold down control, it's now linked into that collection. So it's now in two collections. So it's, it's, it's linked into that one. Um, and then I can unlink it. Um, but yeah collections, love them in every single way. One thing that I've actually voiced this to William, um, who did the UI 
2.8, William Rainish. Big thank you to him. He's done an amazing job. Um, but I did say that like, if you can drag select over here in the 3D viewport, if we're making that a thing, then I wanna drag select here and you can't do that. You can by hitting B, that's box select, which is the old, you know, Blender shortcut for selecting things. So that is how you like select multiple things. Um, I don't know if they're ever gonna like make it so you can drag select, but anyway, that's the one thing that I'm like, ah, oh, that's annoying. Something else I forgot to mention just before we finish up is, uh, uh, let's say for example, I accidentally did that, whoops. I have got an extra loop in there. Now I've got vertices sitting on top of other vertices. So there used to be a remove doubles button. Hmm? And then you do a search for it, remove doubles, and oh my gosh, the Blender developers have lost their mind. They moved the feature that we all need. Well, there's a reason for it. Um, it's now Alt-M, which is the merge shortcut. It's there listed as by distance. Okay, and that has removed the doubles. Now you might be thinking, why did they call it merge by distance? It actually makes sense because remove doubles, it wasn't just like the, the doubles weren't just vanishing and they also weren't doubles. You could merge it by distance. Like this same settings were in the old blender as well. Um, it, was, it was merging it by how close it was to something else. And you already had a merge option. It was already Alt-M to like merge some things and remove doubles was a separate thing and it was called remove doubles. So just call it what it is. It's actually merging things. So Alt M, put it in the same menu and it's right there. And finally, just to finish up, um, I guess finish on a low note, I guess, there's no render button. I know you might be looking for it, but there's no render button. If you wanna click on it, it's render and then render image, um, which yeah, I'm not honestly a big fan of that. I would prefer like to have a big button right there because I'm just used to it. You, you've still got the shortcut F12 as well, but um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know, I kind of miss that. I wish that that was still there. Um, and one final thing as well, there is a workbench, which is a new render engine. So you've got Cycles, you've got EV, and you've got Workbench, which if you're wondering what that is, it's just viewport rendering. So if you want to do like a play blast of like your animation before you do the final render, like if you switch it to workbench mode, you've got all these settings here. are like the exact same settings you would have up here, right? But it's like, I just want to do like for my animation, I want to have it with, uh, with these settings and then I'm going to hit F12 and I'm going to get like a really rapid fast render of just that, of like viewport mode. So that's what workbench is. Doesn't really make sense. I don't know why they call it workbench. Doesn't sound anything like what I would imagine it is, but it's called workbench. I feel like they should just call it like viewport or play blast or something, but anyway. Now I've mentioned uh, a lot of shortcuts here and things that have changed. If you want to get a cheat sheet of all the relevant hotkeys in Blender 2.8, there is a link in the description to download my PDF cheat sheet, which has all of those things. Anyways, thank you for watching guys and uh, give this a thumbs up if you found it useful and I will see you in a future video. Bye.